Welcome back. Stephen Carroll is with us with, for the day's business news. Stephen, we're going to start with French President François Hollande and that interview he gave last night. I imagine the super rich are not too impressed with him today. No, indeed. Wealth tax 2.0. It's coming back the 75% tax on the super rich. The French president has promised it'll make a return after being struck down by France's constitutional court at the end of last year. The first profile... The first proposal, rather, caused some high-profile outrage from the likes of Gérard Depardieu, who fled to Russia as a result of the measure. This time around, though, it will be a case of businesses rather than individuals paying the tax. Catherine Viette has the details. It looks like the 75 per cent tax is back. French President François Hollande may have finally found a way to tax the super-rich by making their companies pay. In a nationally televised interview on Thursday, the president now said he would tax companies on salaries over a million euros. When salaries exceed one million euros, then the company will have to pay a contribution that will amount to 75 percent, all taxes combined. Alain said the measure makes sense at a time when many employees are being asked to take pay cuts. If companies want to avoid the tax, they can lower executive pay. On the highest salaries, companies already pay payroll taxes that equate to at least a 50 percent rate. This new proposal, which would last for only two years, is meant to replace the plan to tax individuals earning more than a million euros a year. In January, France's highest court struck down the measure, saying it was unconstitutional. While the super-rich tax had popular support, it angered many of the nation's top earners and caused several high-profile French citizens, like actor Gérard Depardieu, to leave the country. Like the president's earlier plan, this is seen as a largely symbolic measure. The former tax was expected to nap between 100 to 300 million euros, a drop in the bucket compared with France's 85 billion euro deficit. Stephen, aside from that wealth tax, there was a lot of other things covered by Hollande last night in that interview, wasn't there? Yeah, that's right. Plenty to talk about on the economy. He again stated his priorities of tackling unemployment and creating growth in France. He hasn't had much luck with either to date, actually. Mm -hmm. Unemployment, according to figures out on Tuesday, nearly hit an all-time high. The rate stands at 10.2% in mainland France. The OECD said on Thursday France's economy was going to shrink by 0.6% in 2013, not something Francois Hollande would like to hear either. Absolutely. But public debt, something that the French president uh, had been very worried about, the rising debt, new figures out from the French statistics office in C, showing that it's reached 90.2% of GDP an all-time high. It's 1.83 trillion euros, which if you're trying to count it as 13 digits. Plenty of other measures in there too. Some of the other announcements he made, he said there'll be no increase in taxes in 2013 or 2014. He'll reduce capital gains tax on the sale of business, something that business people have been calling for for some time. He's also said that French people will have to contribute to their pension funds for longer over their career. So overall, quite a bleak picture for the French, really. But let's move on to the markets, and that looks quite bright, actually, really. Yes, good news for a change. The S&P 500, one of the indexes on Wall Street, reached an all-time record on Thursday, closing at 1,569 points. It means that all of the losses in the financial crisis have been wiped out. The index has risen by more than 11% since the start of the year. Positive growth figures helping to just lift them over the barrier. The Dow Jones and the Nasdaq closing in the green as well. Over in Asia, no trading in the Hang Seng in Hong Kong because of the Easter holidays, but the Nikkei and Shanghai Composite figures also in the green. Probably that good, good news from Wall Street, pushing them into the right area. Now here in Europe, Cyprus, um, the banks reopened yesterday. Quite calm, it seems, but there will be tight controls on transactions for the coming month, they're saying. Yeah, that's right. No panic we saw at bank branches as they reopened in Cyprus on Thursday, but there are strict limits on what Cypriots can do in their banks at the moment. They can only withdraw €300 Euros from cash machines every day. They can only take €1,000 out of the country and a €5,000 limit as well on credit and debit card purchases abroad and no cashing of cheques. The idea is being trying to stop a bank run on Cypriot banks. We'd expect these capital controls to remain in place for just seven days. The foreign minister now saying that could last for a month. There's a cautionary tale here from Iceland too. Mm. They introduced capital controls in the wake of their financial crisis, said it would be for three months. They ended up actually been in place now for more than four years.
Now, as we well know, the banks were at the centre of Cyprus's financial problems. And under its bailout deal, the country's second biggest lender is being wound down with its smaller accounts transferred to the Bank of Cyprus. The restructuring will mean job losses, a big worry for Cypriot bank workers. This is the house that Andrea and Thenya built. The couple met at the bank where they work in their native Cyprus almost 30 years ago. Today, the parents of two are preparing for the worst. Their employer, Lackey Bank, will undergo a painful restructuring plan, a condition of the island's Eurozone bailout. I'm preparing my CV. I'll send it to Arab countries, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, somewhere over there, so that I can find a job. What else can I do? This is bad, what I'm going to say. It makes me very sad, but I don't want to live in Cyprus any longer. This is very bitter, what I'm saying, but I can't live in a country where it tricks its people day after day. An 11th-hour deal agreed with the European Union and the International Monetary Fund saved Cyprus from bankruptcy. Under the terms, Lykee, or Popular Bank, will be restructured into good and bad banks. Parts of the good bank are to be merged with the island's largest lender, Bank of Cyprus. Significant job losses are expected. Unemployment uh, as of uh, a few uh, weeks ago was just below 15 percent. Uh, so this, now, this number will change. Uh, this number will double within the next uh, 9 to 12 months. Today it's La Key Bank. Who's next? Keep your hands off La Key, protesters chant as they show up in the thousands. Protests are increasing alongside fear as the social impact of the financial crisis sinks in. After decades of comfortable prosperity, Cyprus now faces years of economic difficulty. A look now at some of the day's other business news in brief and research in motion. The maker of BlackBerry has said it's returned to profit in the three months to the beginning of March. The Canadian smartphone maker made $98 million over the period, compared to a loss of $125 million last year. Since the end of January, the company sold more than a million units with its new operating system, BlackBerry 10. Good news for the company that's lost market share in face of stiff competition from Apple and Samsung. Now, the world's biggest online retailer, Amazon, has agreed a deal to buy book reviews website, Goodreads. Goodreads has 16 million members worldwide. The financial details of that deal haven't been revealed just yet, but Amazon's shares closed up after the news was announced. And new figures from Japan are showing just how much work the government and the new head of the Japanese Central Bank will have to do to fix the country's economy. Industrial output fell in the first three months of the year while consumer prices continued their decline too. The government and the Central Bank have set an inflation target of 2% as part of a package to turn around the world's third, world's third largest economy. And finally, Stephen, we end with one of my favourite brands, Apple. The Chinese seem happy with it, but the Chinese government isn't so. No, there's, the maker of the iPhone and the iPad has been the subject of a sort of a concerted campaign by state-run media in China. Uh, it started with a report on Chinese state television attacking Apple's consumer policies, saying that they weren't treating Chinese consumers as the same as ones in other countries. Then the Communist Party mouthpiece, the People's Daily, ran a series of articles that accused Apple of being greedy and having unparalleled arrogance in the way they do their business. Now, the industry regulators got on board as well, says Apple needs to look at its consumer policies and how it, uh, and how it runs them. Apple's responded by saying that it offers its users an incomparable uh, experience. No surprise. <laughs> Doesn't seem like many in China are taking the criticism too seriously, but it is worth pointing out that China is Apple's second biggest market after the United States, so an important one for them. And it'll be interesting to see if sales do drop, actually, as a result of that. Well, Stephen, thanks for that business update. Do stay tuned to France Van Cat. We'll have news headlines in just a moment.